We return now to London and the showdown between the Prime Minister and Parliament over Brexit. As Special Correspondent Malcolm Brabant reports, with less than two months until the deadline to leave the European Union, the course ahead for the United Kingdom remains no clearer. The mood in Parliament was spikier than usual for Boris Johnson's first ever question time as Prime Minister. Order, order, it's order, order. Despite losing his parliamentary majority and being torpedoed by an internal party rebellion, Johnson adhered to his Brexit mantra. Well, this government will take this country out of the European Union on October the 31st. But the pledge had a hollow ring. Johnson's Conservative Party has been torn apart. The new Prime Minister kicked out 21 lawmakers who ignored his pleas to support the government. They rebelled by backing an opposition Labour Party bill designed to prevent Britain from leaving the EU without a deal. Johnson lambasted what he called this surrender bill. Mr Speaker, let us be absolutely clear, this, this government is going to get a deal from our friends in Brussels. And we will, we will get the backstop out. We will get, a, we will get an agreement that I think this House can approve. The only thing that standing, is standing in our, in our way is the undermining of those negotiations by this surrender bill, which would lead to more dither and delay. But Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn made it clear he didn't believe the Prime Minister. These negotiations that he talks about are a sham. All he's doing is running down the clock. Johnson accused Corbyn of undermining Britain's negotiating position and of being scared of a general election. But there's only one chlorinated chicken that I can see in this house, and he's on that bench. But Corbyn was in a feisty mood. Yesterday, he lost one vote, his first vote in Parliament. And he now wants to dissolve Parliament. He's desperate, absolutely desperate, to avoid scrutiny. After question time, the House began debating the Labour Party bill. One of the most poignant speeches came from a rebel sacked by Johnson, Sir Nicholas Soames, the grandson of Sir Winston Churchill. Mr Speaker, I'm not standing at the next election, and I am thus approaching the end of 37 years' service to this House, of which I have been proud and honoured beyond words to be a member. I'm truly very sad that it should end in this way. Outside Parliament, hardline Conservative Brexiteer Nigel Evans had this reaction. It's not as if they did not know the consequences. It was explained to them uh, beforehand, and so they knew what they were doing. European Union expert Professor Catherine Barnard believes Johnson's brutal cull could be a self-inflicted wound that will reduce his chances of leaving the EU on time. After three years of Theresa May, who's not been able to deliver Brexit, it was quite clear that there was a need for a different approach. And the different approach is to come in all guns blazing and say we're going to deliver this come what may. So it's tone rather than substance, but the tone has clearly backfired rather badly. Former Labour Cabinet Minister Chris Bryant believes Britain is now in an impossible mess. It feels as if the country can't make its mind up on anything. Parliament certainly can't. We're badly led by the Prime Minister uh, and I don't know how we're going to get out of it. Outside Parliament, Brexit supporter David Cooper was looking worried. Well, I think it will happen. I think it has to happen because the, the English people, well, the British people, want it to happen. We voted to leave, we had a referendum and we should be leaving. Labour MP Tan Desi was upset with Johnson for disparaging Muslim women earlier this year and his disdain has grown over the past few days. We have minimal trust in this Prime Minister. I think many of his own colleagues, his, his own MPs don't have trust in him. So how can we look to him to unite us across the chamber in terms of the opposition parties and how can we entrust him to unite our fractured society, our fractured country? On the green outside Parliament, rival factions kept up their chants. There's a sense here that the debate is becoming more raucous and impolite. Nigel Evans. He says stop the coup. You hear that? Stop the coup. The real coup is against the British people who voted in 2016 to leave the European Union and people like him just simply can't accept it. And this is Steve Bray, who's been outside Parliament for the past two years, yelling stop Brexit at every passing politician. Brexit is in free fall. It's an, last night was another nail in the coffin. And uh, this is the end of Brexit. We're never leaving the European Union. Boris Johnson said October 31st, two all die. November the 1st, big funeral. 
It's not clear if such optimism is justified, but those hopes were certainly bolstered tonight as with the support of the now sacked rebel Conservatives, the Labour Party passed that crucial bill. Deeply frustrated by Parliament, Johnson said the only option was a general election as soon as possible. In my view and the view of this government, there must now be an election on Tuesday the 15th of October. A short time ago, his bad day got worse. He lost that vote as well. There are, however, several other ways of trying to trigger an election. Boris Johnson really needs a Hail Mary pass if he's to fulfil his commitment to leave the European Union on October the 31st. He's gambling on a general election. Political analysts here believe that if he should win such an election, he may try to repeal the bill that was passed tonight. But the feeling here is that he may have damaged his election prospects by exiling some of the heavyweights of the Conservative Party. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Malcolm Brabant in London.